Hi Copic Craft fans. Um, believe it or not, I am going to put together my mini album today. Now, there's not a whole lot of actual Copic action happening today, so I totally appreciate it if you are done because you're not doing this particular project, that's okay. If you've been waiting to see this all put together, I am gonna do a lot of fast forwarding and voiceover because I know you aren't necessarily gonna wanna see my process, but if you want, it's here. I hate to start something and not complete it. So there's two things I could have done with this. Um, there is a lot of detail on all of these pages and I could literally come in and maybe add some quotes or words on each page and call it good, add some embellishment. What I've decided to do is actually turn it into a photo mini album from a small trip that my daughter and I took to see my parents this past summer and give it as a gift. So I have, I'm gonna be adding photos as I also add those embellishments. I've trimmed the photos and I am not for fussy cutting photos very often anymore, but when I put them in a mixed media album like this, I will on occasion just because then I can still see more of the mixed media action going on. So I'm gonna be adhering um, photos, but also adding all these fun things that we created along the way um, in snippets and pieces here and there. I've got all these dyed fabrics and stuff, and so hopefully you'll get a chance to kind of see my process and see the project completed. So I'm gonna take this one page at a time and I'm gonna start kind of pulling things apart. I've got my photos ready to go. The cover is gonna get this photo that had a lot of us together on a beach, and then I'm using a gluber, which is a very large glue dot and I'm taking my fabric and cutting it. And I just want a long strip. So what I had done is actually cut it in a spiral and then I'm twisting it and spinning it almost into a cinnamon bun shape on top of that gluber. So it literally sits right on top of that glue dot and then I'm peeling it off, making sure the edges are tucked under and sticking it right on the cover of my album. Notice I've punched holes in the side. I did that by lining it up to my acrylic page. It was already um, had holes in it. And then I'm taking some of the backs of the buttons off with a wire cutter. And I'm writing on top of my cover, Sarah in Seattle with my um, Copic marker. And I'm flipping that page over. I'm going to add another photo. I wasn't planning on fussy cutting this one, but I went ahead and decided to because I like how it fits better. I'm using gel medium to attach those. I love the doodles that I have on the page, so I'm adding them right on top of the photo so I don't lose them. And then I have those doilies that have um, ended up with some mist on them, so I'm adding those as crowns on my daughter and I. Another photo with gel medium. This one's going on the acrylic page. Remember, I can see through this page, so I'm trying to be real careful about what, how I place things and where, where I place them. I'm adding the tool, and then I pulled off some pieces of the burlap and tied on some beads. And then my photo's going on the opposite side of that. Again, some doily back over and now I've got another photo. Notice I'm going to line those photos up so that you can't see them through the pages. Adding jewels, again cutting off the back of those jewels if they have a button backing. Adding those on with glue dots. And I'm pulling off some um, burlap ties I just pull off the strings and they're already dyed since I dyed the burlap. And I'm also using some um, of the twill ribbon, but adding some ties with beads on that acrylic page. The acrylic page came with holes punched on either end and it's a little bit bigger, so I'm adding those on one side. This is actually my fabric page. Um, one side is silk and the other side is the um, that fabric that you use for tablecloths. So I'm attaching a photo, a little bit of doily, burlap, a lot of gel medium on these just to get them really attached well. A 
we'll see over time how well that works on um, the fabric. The gel medium did not work. What I did just there is crumpled up a piece of foil and attached it kind of as a flower. It's a big photo of my daughter, Sarah. I might end up going back and sewing this particular photo on around the edges. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna add some trim along the edge. I'm just using that mesh that we dyed and I'm crinkling it up so it has kind of a ruching effect to it. Another chipboard page. Again, I'm lining it up with the acrylic page. It's the one I'm using the holes. Um, and then this is that, um, the vellum or tracing paper and a little bit of the foil that I doodled on. The lighting's gonna change on you here as my lights get darker outside and so the house lighting kind of takes over, so I apologize for that. I'm attaching the foil actually to the photo and then I'll flip the photo over and you can see it kind of as edges. A little tiny bit of doily in the corner and then I'm adding the the vellum on top because you can see through it and so you can see those edges of the photo still. I'm repunching those holes because some of my trim kind of covered over some of those holes. Again, using a little bit of foil and that transparent vellum. Gel medium is really my glue of choice for a lot of my mixed media work. It works really well. You can use it underneath and on top. Really attaches things pretty well. And I don't mind little trims kind of hanging off the edges of a mixed media album. So I'm leaving some of those out purposefully. Another chipboard page. See, I've got a big piece of tissue paper, and actually this is that um, pattern paper that I kind of just misted. Some ribbon to trim and kind of frame that photo, those cute little faces of my daughter and her cousins. And I'm going to cut down the burlap. I'm kind of giving myself a frame by pulling out some of the threads. And then you can see I'm pulling more off as I go and trimming that down. And then I realize it's going to cover the whole page. So I make the burlap considerably smaller. I feel like I still want to see what's underneath some. I realize one of the biggest issues when you do mixed media is you'll find a little corner that you want to keep. And then you desperately trim things just to keep one little thing that you love. But... So I have the burlap, and then I have a little piece of the vellum, and then I've got one little flower that I'm gonna tuck, kind of one more flower button that I'm gonna tuck on top. I'm using just a glue dot to attach this one. That works a lot better with those heavier plastic objects. And I actually am all the way back, I think, to my last chipboard page, yeah. This one is one that I didn't want to cover. I'd spent so much time coloring this, I wanted to keep that. So I actually fussy cut the photo, not only around my daughter and her cousin, but then into the rocks so that it would frame the face that I'd colored. The back has a really simple photo, but I really wanted to keep the essence of that plain and the mountain. So there, I'm adding to the wing with my Copic marker, kind of extending it out of the photo and then writing so long Seattle. So I kept the back page really, really simple. I'm adding rings and now I'm stacking my pages. If you can't tell, this is super sped up so you guys could see all of this. And of course, any good mixed media album is gonna have a lot of fun going on on the rings. So I'm adding tool, I'm adding ribbon, I'm adding burlap, and then of course, any beads I have left over, they are getting added on for sure. This is going to be a gift for my mom and dad this Christmas because those are, that's who we were visiting in Seattle this past summer. So I think they will enjoy it and get a lot of pleasure out of flipping through. So kind of flipping through so you can see how the pages connect. 
I really appreciate you following along. I hope you got some good information out of the video series. Thank you. Have a great day.